Welcome to the Baha'i House of Worship for North America. This sacred space, from its serene and welcoming gardens to its awe-inspiring auditorium, is a space open to all for prayer, quiet contemplation, and spiritual renewal. Here, all are welcome. The first public mention of the Baha'i Faith in America was in Chicago in 1893 at the World Parliament of Religions, an extension of the Chicago World's Fair. By the early 1900s, nearly 1,000 people in the United States and Canada had embraced the Baha'i Faith. The members of this new religion wanted to demonstrate their devotion to God and build a temple for all people. Chicago's location in the heart of the continent and the peaceful beauty of the site on the shores of Lake Michigan made it a natural choice for the first Baha'i House of Worship in North America. Abdul Baha, the eldest son of Baha'u'llah, founder of the Baha'i Faith, traveled from Palestine, now Israel, to North America in 1912 and while in Chicago laid the cornerstone and was the guest of honor and featured speaker at the groundbreaking ceremony. He set forth clear instructions for certain aspects that Baha'i houses of worship should include and specified that women should be involved in the planning and development of it. During one of his addresses in Chicago at the time, Abdul Baha said that Baha'u'llah had commanded that a place of worship be built so that all religions, races, and sects may come together within its universal shelter, that the proclamation of the oneness of mankind shall go forth from its open courts of holiness. Conceptual designs were offered by noted architects from across North America. But of all the designs, delegates to the 1920 National Baha'i Convention unanimously selected the design created by Louis Bourgeois, a French-Canadian architect who had studied at the legendary École des Beaux-Arts Academy of Architecture in Paris. Fulfilling Bourgeois' dream of creating a temple of light and unity, the House of Worship's lacy arabesque panels embrace natural light during the day an illumination from within at night. Construction began in 1920, and from 1920 through 1921, caissons for the building were sunk down to the bedrock, a depth of 120 feet, and the foundation basement was completed. For the next 10 years, no further progress was made. This enabled the Baha'is to accumulate needed funds for the next stage of construction, and it gave engineers time to solve some of the many unprecedented construction problems. In 1930, work on the temple's superstructure began. Architect Louis Bourgeois consulted with John Early, an expert in ornamental concrete in the Washington, D.C. area, about constructing the dome from cast concrete panels mounted on a steel superstructure. To achieve Bourgeois' vision of the whitest possible surface, Early experimented with white Portland cement combined with crushed quartz. The result is a glistening exterior that sparkles in the sunlight. The panels were sculpted, cast, and cleaned at the early studios. 
packaged, and then shipped 700 miles on railroad flat cars to Wilmette. At the time, the building was considered the most elaborate concrete structure in the world, consuming thousands of workman hours. In June of 1932, the task of applying the ornamentation to the superstructure was started. And by January of 1943, the entire exterior, including the steps, was finished. During the Second World War years, no work on the temple was undertaken. Then, in November of 1947, work began on the interior, which was completed in 1952. Landscaping of the grounds began in April of that year and was completed by the temple's dedication in the spring of 1953. Nine circular gardens surround the Baha'i House of Worship and are an integral part of the sacred space, serving as outdoor rooms for prayer, meditation, and the appreciation of nature. The temple gardens are seasonally planted with flowers and foliage of various kinds, colors, and fragrances in both native and global species, each where it will best thrive a physical metaphor that reflects the beauty of unity in diversity. Behold a beautiful garden full of flowers, shrubs, and trees. Each flower has a different charm, a peculiar beauty. Yet all these flowers spring from the self-same earth. The same sun shines upon them, and the same clouds give them rain. So it is with humanity. It is made up of many races, and its peoples are of different color. But they all come from the same God, and all are servants to Him. Baha'i houses of worship all have nine sides, nine doors, and nine gardens. The number nine, the highest single digit, represents unity, perfection, and completion. The building's majestic dome calls to mind God's grace sheltering all people. The symbol at the top of the dome is an arrangement of the Arabic words, Ya Baha'u'llah, a prayer or invocation meaning O glory of the all-glorious. The unity of the religious traditions is represented in the ornamentation on the pillars of the temple. Symbols include the Christian cross, the Star of David, the Star and Crescent Moon of Islam, the hooked cross of Hindu, Buddhist, and ancient Native American traditions, and the nine-pointed star of the Baha'i faith. Nine inscriptions from the writings of Baha'u'llah are carved above the building's entrances and in the alcoves of the auditorium, attesting to the unity of religion and its power to transform the human character. O oh, rich ones on earth, the poor in your midst are my trust. Guard ye my trust. Blessed is the spot. Baha'is have no clergy and sermons or lectures are not permitted in the auditorium. Devotional services include prayer, meditation, the reading of sacred scriptures of the Baha'i faith and other religions, and often music by soloists and a cappella choir. To Baha'is, worship means more than prayer and meditation. Baha'u'llah said that any work done in a spirit of service is a form of prayer. The temple project took 50 years, continuing through two world wars and the Great Depression. The building was financed entirely by voluntary contributions from Baha'is around the world. 
More than 5,000 people gathered for dedication services as the Baha'i House of Worship was opened to the public in May 1953. This House of Worship, now opening wide its doors to peoples of all creeds, of all races, of all nations, and of all classes, is dedicated to three fundamental verities animating and underlying the Baha'i faith. The unity of God, the unity of his prophets, the unity of mankind. The Baha'i House of Worship reflects a faith of optimism, freedom from prejudice, and service to humankind. It invites its visitors to experience the beauty and serenity of its gardens and interior spaces, to learn about and contemplate the interconnectedness of all people and all religions. It reminds us of our tie to a just and loving Creator who shelters us all and progressively reveals the guidance that we need. It inspires our highest hopes of a united world and sustainable peace. As Baha'u'llah predicts, Yet so it shall be. These fruitless strifes, these ruinous wars, shall pass away. And the most great peace shall come.